first of all, Professor Lewis, welcome to Fort Lauderdale. Thank you very much, uh, Jabalani and Roots Foundation, and thank you for the way in which you have enabled a community to celebrate the anniversary of Garvey each year in a collective way, and for honoring those people in the community here and abroad who have made contributions in keeping with the philosophy and opinions of Garvey. So you Roots Foundation and your supporters are to be congratulated on sustaining what is a very, very demanding organizational set of activities to bring about successful events such as has taken place. It's the second time I've been here and glad to be back. Well, thank you very much. First of all, you kind of preempted uh, my question, which was, how did you find the event? Last night, for, 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 for viewers, uh, it was the 2018 Marcus Garvey Roots Extravaganza held in Fort Lauderdale, in Lauderdale Lakes, to be precise. And um, Professor Lewis's wife, Maureen, was here with us, and he was also at the event. So. I presume that means you enjoyed the event and it went well. Well, I enjoyed the event. I'm happy that uh, my wife, Ma Professor Maureen Warner Lewis, was honored because she's really the leading scholar in our family. Oh. And uh, <laughs> she has set the pace for all of us uh, with her sustained work in linguistics and in documenting the language, African language survivals in the entire Caribbean and Latin America. She was the person who demonstrated through her interviewing uh, with all these African descendants or the children of, of those who came, those who were in the post-emancipation period, African indentured labor. People speak of Indian indentured labor, but there's African indentured labor oh, as well. And it is their descendants uh, who were very important resources for her to document the reality of African languages in the Caribbean well into the 20th century. And linguistics is so much more important in how we think and perceive than a lot of people give it credit for. So that is indeed a very important endeavor you're speaking about. Yes, it is, because even when you don't have the African language uh, existing in the form that it was brought here in, its impact on so many aspects of our life, French, the Creole, Creole. that the Haitians mm -hmm. speak, the Jamaican Creole, the, patois. the exactly patois the impact on food burial practices uh, birth practices it is infused in our lives and I have heard her lecture to students on campus and when she's finished it is they who are telling her based on the questions that she's asking them they don't know the African retentions that they have, that they have but yes. they are living yes. embodiments yes. of Africa in yes. the Caribbean, and so are we all. It's just that as a scholar, she has been able to enable us to know ourselves much better than we, we, did, before. we did before. Yes, And that's, I think, the hallmark of uh, her contribution to um, the culture of Caribbean and Latin American culture. So to talk to me now about Garvey's place in all of this now. Marcus Garvey, he, they say he's Jamaica's first national hero, yet they still are not teaching children, students in high school about him. Marcus Garvey, talk to us about Garvey and Garvey's importance. Well, the main thing for me is the philosophical legacy of Garvey. Not so much the forms like the UNIA. Even though you wouldn't say that of all black leaders, he was one of the most practical in terms Absolutely. Of, of, of businesses I and, think, he, and the I economics think he, behind he, his venture. I think one of the decisive differences between him and the entire generation of post-independence leaders is his understanding of finance, businesses, 
independent resources because you can get the superstructure mm -hmm. of the political system. But then, how do you make it work? If it's not sustainable, if it's not sustainable, and if there's no self-sufficiency, exactly. Who are you beholden? Who to? are you beholden to? So the, I would say that that, in order to do what he did, he had to make the financial preparation mm -hmm. for the businesses, for the Black Star Line, to buy boats for, for new, millions of for dollars, dollars yeah, by the, black people in yes, the nineteen yeah. twenties. Yes, Ooh. and he saw that black people have money. Yes, right. And the question was that the elite groups were able to organize that money in their own interest and he saw that the war bonds black americans had put, had bought millions of dollars of war bonds and Garvey's idea was that if you could do this for the white war effort why not do this for yourselves in terms of your business so i think that at that moment in the 1918 19 period when the U.S. economy was still benefiting, because war always post -war leads war to post-war boom, post boom. Mm. Uh, he struck at the correct moment and was able to raise the funds necessary. But then came the sabotage, then came the challenges of uh, his the own capabilities in the black community to run the Manage ships and this, do yeah. the legal work, mm -hmm. do the accounting work. Remember, Amy Jakes's brother had, was an accountant. They had to ship him in from Jamaica into New York to help on the accounting side uh, of the UNIA businesses. So you have factors. These administrative challenges you're ad speaking of. Administrative challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's where Amy Jakes was very good at because she was a superb administrator she understood the behind the scenes work that was necessary, necessary. to support the person who was up front mm -hmm. Gavi is the up front nobody could mobilize like him nobody right it's not like having a civil service to support exactly you have so, to have an administrative yeah, system yeah. to support yeah. and that administrative system also has to include auditing because wherever you have money you're going to have temptation mm -hmm. and if you don't have proper auditing you're not going to be able to sustain your effort he is out there he can raise the money but who's going to prevent the money from being stolen mm -hmm. uh, by others and there's a lot of that that happened documented extensively by my colleague uh, Tony Martin in his classic book uh, race force where he goes through all of the ways in which blacks undermine in Garvey so the administrative system uh, was not adequate and to do all the legal work that was necessary including legal work in his own trial defense, yes. in his own defense mm -hmm. um, so we, we I, I, I still come back to his philosophical thing mm -hmm. in that his basic thing is where we have to carve out our place in the world and you can't power will not be given to you and this is a mistake that many independent countries have made in that they don't go beyond what was assigned to them yes. the role that was given to them by the former colonial who are still colonial using more complex mechanisms now they have of turned control. us into neo-colonial exactly. so exactly. it's a continuation, it's a continuation of the same thing in a different it. form yeah. yeah yeah i think that the the question of garvey was a dynamic thinker and a future person looking at the future and in that the quotation I take from him, which we always use in their bang newspaper in 1969, we want our people to think for themselves. It's not, Emancipate yourself from yeah, mental it's not slavery. only saying what he said, but in new situations which we are in in the 21st century, how do we now think for ourselves? That is, that is his, his mission 